Hi guys, welcome to week 11. Um, I'm putting up the videos a little bit earlier this week um, because I have some uh, weekend plans so I won't be able to film. Um, so I'm almost all the way through your test right now. and This is on Wednesday, so by the time I post these, this might be different. Um, the main thing that I just wanted to say about those, make sure that you know the fingerings for your scales and you're really comfortable on them. Um, I've spoken with some of you and have had some of you come to office hours and it's starting to help quite a bit. Um, in terms of having those correct fingerings, this is a really hard thing to teach on your own. So even if you're just a little confused about anything ever, uh, feel free to email me and we can use those office hours or set up a time outside of that. So with that being said, this week we're going to be again in our new book, um, on Unit 3 on page 41. Um, the first page talks a little bit about sonata form, which we're probably going to talk about maybe a little bit later because, <coughs> excuse me, the piece on page 42 and 43 um, is one that we're going to look at probably later on closer to Thanksgiving break, which is only in a couple weeks really, but um, we will take a look at that. So with that being said, let's turn in our books to page 44. We've covered uh, D minor this semester. And I'm not sure if you guys have covered D major or not. I've heard from a couple of you that you did not get to scales. So D harmonic minor and D major are going to have the same fingerings. Um, so if you can, let's go down to D harmonic minor first and start with a refresher on that. So um, our key signature, we've got one flat, B flat, and we've also got our C sharp to make it harmonic minor. So all white notes except for B flat and C sharp. Our fingering in the right hand is one, two, three, and then so one, two, three, we flip under, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, same, one, two, three, four, and then five for the top, and then come back down, five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, Repeat that as many times as you need to. Um, really make sure that you're turning in the right places where you need to be turning. So if that means just taking a pencil and circling all those ones, that might help a little bit. Um, especially when you put it hands together and when you turn is in completely different spots. That's a little bit frustrating. So see if you can do little things like that or draw where the fingers line up together. Okay? So then left hand, our good old cage fingering. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, and then back down. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Okay. So to put these in the uh, bottom level, we're going to try these hands together very 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 slowly okay so if you feel really comfortable putting them hands together there's no need to practice with me I mean unless you really want to focus on a specific spot but if you're having a lot of trouble putting these hands together then we're gonna take off very slow and I'm okay so threes together advice that I can give you is look for the first place where you feel like your fingers are going out from under you. Back up several notes, like maybe three or four notes before that, um, or start at the beginning and really just check. You might have to go at a glacial pace. That's okay for right now. Okay. 
I want to make sure that you guys know these really well so that when you get to the next class when we're trying to do stuff for piano proficiency, you don't have to relearn these at all. Okay? All right, let's do the same thing um, with 3-5 for the arpeggio. We're just going to go for the right hand. One, two, three. One, two, three, five. Back down. Five, three, two, one, three, two, one. Okay. And then left hand. Together, we're going to go really slow for this. Down. Good. Okay. So same thing, um, in this one, the thumbs do line up on those Ds um, in the bridge between the first and second octave, so I would circle that if you have trouble remembering where to turn, okay? All right, so now let's go back up to the top of the page and let's go ahead and do D major, okay? Same exact fingering, except this time we're gonna keep the C sharp, leave out the B flat and add an F sharp instead, okay? <laughs> So those should be your two sharps. Same fingering. Now, I want you guys, if you're playing along with this right now, to name the fingering as I play it. I'm going to go very slowly, okay? But same as D minor. scale up. Look for where your fingers line up. What I'm specifically looking at is that our threes are going to be together. We're going to play three in both hands on F sharp and then again on B natural. So watch out for those two notes. If you're not playing with your third finger on those notes, then you've gotten off somewhere and you need to go back and reevaluate. Okay? These take quite a bit of time, but that's why we're reviewing them more than anything else in the world essentially right now. Okay? So now let's go to 3-3 for the arpeggio, okay? Same fingering. Um, so make sure that you have an F sharp instead of an F natural this time, and then say the fingering as you play with me, okay? No. 
left hand. together even slower than what we just did. Work on that, look for the places where your hands line up and everything. Um, and this is just gonna take a, quite a bit of practice. See if you can practice this um, along with the other cage scales that we've done, so the minor and the major, uh, both. Um, uh, just so that you can really lock in that fingering. Um, it's gonna be harder if you do a bunch of different scales, like if you do F sharp and C sharp, but I know we just came from doing a bunch of those different ones. But in the similar groups, try to group them uh, together as much as possible. So. That being said, that's it for um, D major and D minor, and we will move on.